Hi, John. Hi, John. All right. So what we're going to talk about today are two different things. First one is tolerances. Uh, that is uh, mainly how sensors work and uh, the programming that goes behind it. We're also going to be uh, finding the maximum and minimum in an array of data. Okay. Uh, so some of this is going to involve some math and some whiteboard work, and then also some uh, some stuff in clips. All right. So let's talk. Uh, both of these heavily used in engineering and uh, any sort of industrial situation uh, dealing with code and machinery. So uh, I've got here on the picture here, uh, rockets are one of the great examples of just so much engineering, so much technology, science, computer software, everything, you know, all coming together. You've got uh, code that is highly optimized, connecting the sensors to the equipment and the, you know, the engines. And, uh, you have, so you've got programming, you have engineering, you have structures and material science, uh, you have chemistry, uh, you have uh, the, the physics of, of objects that are going up into space, you have gravity, you have forces, you have so many different things going on here. Um, it's, you know, they say you know, it's not rocket science. You know, this is rocket science because it's pretty much the combination of the most advanced disciplines uh, that we have. So it, it makes for really good examples. Um, and the, the SpaceX Falcon 9, this is actually the, the Falcon Heavy, which is three Falcon 9s, you know, strapped together. And uh, it is one of the, if not the most heavily censored rockets. And I don't mean it's a black box in front of it, you know, you can't see it. All right. Uh, I mean, is there are sensors all over this sucker? Temperature sensors, pressure sensors, uh, force sensors, uh, and sensors I don't even know, you know, don't even know what the heck they are. And um, one of those sensors is made by uh, this group, or at least it was a couple years ago. Um, and that is the, uh, what do they call it? The Allied, the Alliance Sensor Group. And this is one of their sensors that went on the Falcon 9 rocket. All right, so I was like, okay, tell me more about the Alliance Sensor Group. And here's one of their, So this is a, oh, hold on, let's see what, half the battle is what, buddy. He's going to talk uh, to us about their uh, linear variable differential transformer, okay? It's a position sensor, uh, and it's manufactured with precision to withstand some of the harshest environments, and he's going to talk to us about that. So one of the things that the, from the software side that you've got to deal with when you're uh, dealing with sensors is uh, you've got to figure out is this, uh, this 
value that I'm getting from the sensor, um, is, that a, is that a good value? Is it within the range of acceptable values or is it outside that range? Okay. So let's say, for instance, you've got some pressure sensor or temperature sensor, let's say temperature, you know, uh, we're all familiar with that. Okay, so let's say you want it to be 50 degrees. Okay, well, if that, if that temperature sensor is worth its weight, I mean, if it's quality, you're putting it onto a, something that's really going to, uh, you know, a system that's gonna depend on that temperature being consistent or whatever, then you're gonna want something that's pretty accurate, not just, you know, about 50, you know, plus or minus 10 degrees, or whatever. I mean, you're going to want something that's going to be extremely, uh, extremely precise. So, something that can tell the difference between 49.9 and 50. Okay, uh, that's not unrealistic. We've got you know, temperature sensors. You know, I got two little Finch robots in the back of my program. One shoot, we're doing it can tell like to the you know, almost to the nearest hundred. You know, it's just little off the counter stuff. Um, the problem is, is that if you say in your code, if it's not equal to 50, your temp is not equal to 50, then throw a red flag, shut the engine down, you know. That's probably not going to be the best code for you. Because you're going to have, even if somebody just sort of breathes on it, or a little breeze, you know, blows across the sensor, it's going to you know, fluctuate by maybe, you know, half a degree here or there, okay, you know? Um, I mean, how many of you really tried to bite down hard on that thermometer when you were sick? You ever got that? You're like, mm -hmm. your parents use the ear thermometers or, I don't know. I bite down hard on that sucker. I'm like, I don't care if there's mercury in there. I'm sick, dang it, and I'm gonna, anyway. But, uh, you know, so the thing is, is that you might get a 49.9 or you might get a 50.1. Um, and those might be okay values, but if you're, um, but, and so your code needs to be smarter than just say if the temperature is not equal to 50, okay? So uh, you normally would have some sort of tolerance. You might say, okay, we're going to allow a plus or minus one degree, okay? So that'll let us go down to 49 and up to 51, and all of these are valid, right? Okay, so, um, but if it's outside of that range, then we want to shut down or we want to send a flag and then you could have other things where if it's, you know, maybe only if it's in, if it's in this range, you only uh, send a notification say, hey, this is kind of getting outside the boundary. If it's plus or minus like two degrees, then you do a terminal shutdown sort of sequence or something like that uh, or whatever. Uh, the question is, um, how do we do that efficiently with our code? Um, because we want this checking, you know, constantly, as fast as possible. And so if we have uh, really, really long code, then that's gonna take longer to process, especially if it's executing you know, hundreds of times a second. And literally, sometimes those milliseconds matter. Uh, SpaceX has had two unfortunate accidents uh, where the rocket exploded. One of them was on its way you know, to the space station, another one was actually on the launch pad. And they, uh, created a timeline of events that was down to like, I think like the millisecond, like a millisecond 0 0.001, this happened, millisecond 0 0.002, this happened. And they had, and they broke the sensor data down into that range just to try to, to figure out this trigger, then this trigger, then this trigger by looking at the sensor value that they got. And that's how they were able to get to the root cause. But if you can have a sensor which is identifying a problem that occurs at this millisecond and then it sends a signal to stop within the next second, you might be able to prevent, in this case, it was, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of a satellite um, that was destroyed. So anyway, so uh, let's say that this is our, um, if our, this is our actual value. Okay, so um, 50, or sorry, that's our, um, that's our goal or our target. That's our target. Then this right here is going to be our actual and the plus or minus one is our tolerance. We could say something like, if actual is greater than 51, or actual less than 49, shut down, right? Sound good? But, but you know, at this point, um, 
that's hard coding this stuff in. We don't necessarily want it to, to hard code in if we can avoid it um, because that might need to change and if we can have just one sort of module that would be good for all situations. So rather than saying 51, I'll say uh, target plus tolerance. Well, it could be, we probably should, we can't have two for both of them. Let's say goal. So goal plus tolerance, or if it's less than, goal minus tolerance. So far so good? Okay. Um, that's good, but that's not great. Okay? Um, it's good because it's gonna work, but it's not great because it still has to execute this sum and that comparison, and you have to execute this difference and then that comparison. See what I'm saying? So what we want to do is we want to try to try to combine this so that it's um, it's an even batch. We want to optimize that. Okay. So any idea on how we could maybe reduce this to just one single if statement? Let me throw out an idea in this place. Let's say that our, um, let's say that we had uh, 52 right there. We're gonna shut down, obviously, right? So what if I said this? What if my actual minus, let's get rid of this, my actual minus the goal. So what's that gonna be? 52 minus 50, two degrees, right? Well, if that is greater than tolerance then shut down so we want to say 52 minus 50 is that greater than tolerance yep it's two so is that two greater than one so the, the, the amount that we were off is more than our allowable so that works out just fine but what if I was over here what if I was over here at 40 in that case, I would have actual, which is 40, minus our goal, which was 50. Well, 40 minus 50 is 10. negative 10. Oh, whoops, yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Just use absolute value. And that's, that, that's basically what I'm trying to get at with this whole lesson here so far. You put math.absolute value around that, and that's going to give you the absolute value of the difference between those two. And then that will, uh, that'll tell you when to shut down. Okay, so that's one of the ways that you can, uh, that way you can solve that. And you can optimize that code a little bit, assuming that the math dot absolute value is better than this. Okay, so there you go. There's tolerances. Any questions? All right. Now this next one is going to be pretty tricky. All right, so you might need to make a list here. I'm gonna make an array. And let's say four, two, and a two. Uh, six, eight, nine. All right, now while I take attendance, I want you to look through that and find the highest number. Take about two minutes. Find the highest number in that array. You can talk about it, that's fine. Here we go. Alright, y'all need more time? No. Okay, Ross, what's the largest number in that array? Um, you can call someone a friend if you need to. Huh? Someone a friend if you need to. Greatest number. Let's go uh, for, uh, for one. 
No, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, All right. Okay. Good, good try, though. I appreciate it. Yeah. Alex, what's the greatest number in that array? Ten. You are correct. All right. Ralph, don't beat yourself up. You're tapping anybody. All right. All right. So he's off by zero. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, how did you know that, Alex? Because he's a computer science genius. Okay, all right. Um, so the question is, well, you obviously know that 10 is bigger than the sum of those. How would you get a computer to do that? To figure out which one of those numbers is the biggest? Rosa? Math.max? Okay. That'll work. Now here's your problem. Math.max only compares two letters, two numbers. So, elaborate on that. Um, you have to make them do like two each time. Okay, you have to go through two each time. So, which ones would I compare first? Your top two and your two. Okay, and then what? And then the ones higher that they made. Okay, so look at those two and figure out who the winner is. Yep. And then take that winner and compare it to 10. Mm -hmm. And then with that winner. To six. To six. And that one to eight. And that one to 11. Yep, that, that's, good. that's good procedure. It's kind of the same way that we do when we play ping pong in the workroom, where the first two people come into the table and we play. And then whoever, it's called the winner stays. And win y'all ever done this like at a like ping pong or pool or anything like that? Um, so winner stays at the table, and then the next person comes up, and then the next person comes up, and then the next person, okay? And so uh, if we want to think about that in terms of uh, code, we'll write sort of pseudocode, we want to have some sort of variable called the winner, and we said that's going to be the difference between the first and the second, right? Mm -hmm. And then have some sort of loop through the rest and we say the winner equals like math.max between the current winner and the, the new guy, the challenger. We'll say the next number. Okay. Let's go ahead and implement that in code in the clips so you can open up your MacBook and let's get the clips up and running. By the time we run through this, the winner should be 10. Ralph while we're waiting up for a computer school to make sure we're that. So let's go ahead and create a new class. So we can get into it here. So we'll say int array, integer array called r equals 4, 2, 10, 6, 8, 1. 4, 2, 10, 6, 8, 1. So then we've got our winner variable is equal to math.max Rosa, how would I access the first number in that array? Like, how would I access it? Um, start with that section zero. Okay. So r zero comma r one. Yeah, r is 
And then we'll do a for loop. We'll say int i equals, now we want to start at position two, is that correct? Yeah. i less than array.length, i plus plus. Math.max winner, comma, R, I. And then we do brackets. How have you changed and improved it? Because I know you're thinking here. Oh. All right. Um, well, I'm going to change it here real quickly. I'm going to I'm going to change it so that with this test data, I'm going to see if this works when the largest number is the very first one. So I'm going to put 44, and I'm going to run it to see if it works. The winner is 44. Okay, that works. I'm going to change it so that the winner is the very last number. I'll that to be a hundred seems to work fine there I'll try it with the second number just for fun 29 29 what's another way that I could change this program to see if, if this is a really good solution decimal okay I could uh, that's going to be I could change everything to a double um, the numbers will just change inside there. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I have the double and double looks like that or double and this. Um, that, that shouldn't make too big of a difference. Think about it in terms of your coding bat experience. What's some of the weird stuff that they throw you with your arrays? Empty, empty arrays. Empty arrays. Okay. I like where you're going with that. I'm not going to go empty just yet, but I'm going to make an array with three items. And I'll see if that works. Okay. I'm going to do now an array with two items. Okay. Now I'm going to do an array with one item. And we broke it. <laughs> Why did it break when I have only one item in the array? It has nothing to compare to. Because we're saying that the winner is the winner between the first and second one. Okay? Any ideas on how we could fix that? Rosa, I saw, thought I saw you, you. You changed this line pretty quickly, didn't you? Do you have the winner? You don't have the winner as the. Okay, change it to equal zero. Okay. Uh, yeah, now we do need to change that for loop because they're saying int i equals two. Oh. We want, what's the first one, where do we want to change that to zero? Okay. Hey, the winner's four. Um, I'll put five there. Winner's five, okay. Three. 
expensive, it wasn't pretty good. Um, if there's if there if the ray is completely empty, then that's kind of like a that's not that big of a deal. I could just say, you know, um, I could put an if statement right here and say if the length is zero, say the ray doesn't have anything else, do all this stuff. You know what I mean? Like I could say if you don't you don't need to type this if r dot length equals zero system dot dot print line no data in array you see what I'm saying like you could do all that stuff I'm not really at this point concerned about a situation where there is no, where there isn't any data in the array I'm more concerned about making sure that I handle situations that the array does have stuff so just a simple if statement would be able to take care of that. However, I can now think of a data set that will bust this. Anybody want to make a guess? In other words, I can I can have one. It's not going to red code. It's not going to redline a desk with this. It's not going to give a, a runtime error, but it'll give a logic error. I can have this program give us the wrong number for what the max storm is. All negative. See, Alex is thinking here. Negative four, negative five, negative three. Which one is the biggest number in that set, Alex? You are correct. However, if I run this program, the winner is negative. The winner is zero. That's not even in my data set. Okay, so we don't want the winner to equal zero. What do we want the winner to equal? I, yeah, I know we want to equal negative three, but I mean, like, what do we set it initially to? Sin r. <laughs> Sin equal to r? Huh? Yeah. No. Um, that will give me a syntax error because uh, you're, you're actually pretty close. You're getting on the right track. This is an array. This is um, has three different sets of data, okay? This has only one slot. So I can't take a three slot thing and put it into a one slot thing. Okay? But you're close. Um, any other ideas? And what would that uh, what would that if be? Well, I got an idea. What if Okay, look, what if I just kick the problem down the road here? What if I said negative 100? I think that'll give us a good answer here, right? Because negative 100 versus negative 4, negative 4 is bigger. Mm -hmm. And a negative 5 versus negative 4, well, negative 4 is going to remain the but negative four versus negative three. So okay. So we're getting closer. Unfortunately, I can still think of a data set that's going to bust this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I put yeah, I can put negative four hundred. I can put negative five hundred. I can put negative three hundred. And now, this is saying that the winner is negative one hundred, and that's not even a number in my data set. Okay. There are two solutions to this problem, both of them kind of interesting. All right? The first one is to say, let's just keep kicking this down the road. Let's go to negative 1,000. But then you would say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. OK? So I would say this. Well, what if we put the smallest possible integer that could exist? And be like negative in, negative infinity? No, because integers can't go. Aren't you've got a finite set of data, a finite set of bits in your computer? The actual smallest integer that you can have is like negative two billion something. It is, but Java has provided a way you, with the integer class. I think it just it might be in there. Integer dot min value. is the absolute smallest integer that, uh, or smallest, yeah, that integer that an, an int k 
can hold. And it's kind of counterintuitive because what you're doing is you're setting the winner to be the ultimate loser. But that's okay because in the very first round, the loser's going to lose to the very first guy. See what I'm saying? To that negative 400. And then we're up and rolling. Negative 400 versus negative 500. Negative 400 wins. Negative 400 versus negative 300. Negative 300 wins. Okay, we're done. Make sense? All right. Um, the next, uh, the, uh, the, so that's one option, is to set the ultimate winner to be the ultimate loser. Okay. Um, the other solution is this. You set the winner to the very first element. So I say I want the winner to equal negative 400. You say, yeah, you were. You almost had it. You were, you were close. Because that way, I mean, it's the guy that comes to the table first. Whoever's first in the room, you're the winner. You own the table. You're king, right? But then a challenger walks in and you play. And then the winner stays. If I wanted to optimize the code a little bit, I could uh, change this to a one at that point, but I'm not going to really worry about doing it. Only doing one. It's comparing negative 400 to negative 400 and that but so if you look at that, it's going to give me 300 for the winner. If I change these all to positive, it's going to give me 500, which is what I would say. Okay. Uh, what if I wanted the ultimate loser? I wanted the smallest number. Loser. Loser. Oopsla. Anything else I would change? Oh, the max value, max value. Mm hmm Change math.max to math. Dot min. So loser is three hundred. loser is 40 yeah so it, it's gonna work no matter what think about this in the context of what we were saying before what if I wanted to use that integer dot would I still do min value yeah. uh, yes I would do max value oops So I would set the loser to the ultimate winner and have him fight the first challenger. Well, the first challenger is either equal to that or lower. If he's equal to it, then okay, he still stays the same. If he's lower, then he's the new loser. And then they play, and then they're the new loser, and so on and so forth. All right, so it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, you could use this algorithm to find the, uh, the, the biggest winner, the biggest loser. Uh, if somebody was entering data in, like if they were typing numbers in, um, anyway, so, but this is a, a very common uh, algorithm. I call it the winner stays method. You know. And as a general rule, I like to set it equal to the first value in the array and then just do something like this. Great. So, we've got five minutes left, six minutes left. What did we talk about today, class? In what? The biggest number, the, or the smallest number in? in yep, in an array. What else did we talk about? Okay. Elaborate on that.
We also talked about uh, the integer dot max value and the integer min value. Uh, those are also present for double, that are present for all the, the wrapper classes. And uh, if you're interested, are you interested in seeing what those values are? So the minimum va value is negative two million one hundred forty seven million four hundred eighty three thousand six hundred forty eight, and the maximum value is two billion one hundred forty seven million four hundred eighty three thousand six hundred forty seven. Zero kind of gets put in the positive half, and uh, sure while we're at it, I'll show you there's a double. Max value and hey, four point nine times ten to the negative three hundred twenty fourth, and a maximum value of one point seven nine blah 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 times ten to the three hundred and eight. All right, Rob. All right. There's also, in case you're curious, after integer, yeah, there's long. We don't deal with it much in AP Computer Science, but there it is. So you can see it's significantly more digits than uh, its integer friend there. It's more than double. It's significantly more than double. Um, and that's the difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit. Ivan? All right. Thanks for watching. Ivan, and you